How's that? Oh, that works. If you turn it on, it works. Yeah. Yes, good morning again. Good to see you this morning. Thank you for coming. What a gorgeous day, isn't it? It's a beautiful day to be out and about, and it's a beautiful day to be in God's house. And um, I, uh, I'm happy to be back today. Brad did a great job last week, and, uh, but it's, it's good to be back and visit with you and, uh, and be able to worship with you. I mean, you know, to, uh, to be able to be here on Sunday morning with you. Do we have any announcements we need to make? Um, I know the trustees are scheduled to meet at 1230. They're going to meet right after church instead. So if you're a member of the Board of Trustees, after church, just run right over to the NX. Uh, they don't have a whole lot of business to take care of, so they shouldn't be there long. And because um, uh, I know a lot of people have a funeral to go to and other things this afternoon, so they're going to go ahead and meet right after church. And so uh, hopefully that will, that will work out well. Uh, we have some announcements in the bulletin. Don't forget Wednesday at 6 o'clock is our choir rehearsal. And uh, we say, you know, my position on the choir is, if you can sing, come to the choir. If you can't sing, come and make a joyful noise, you know, but come and be part of it. Um, I remember all the years that I was in co church choirs, the best part of being in the choir was the rehearsals. They were so much fun, <laughs> you know, always have so much fun at the rehearsals. So if you'd just like to come and check it out one time, feel free to do that. <laughs> And then we want to remind you again that on Sunday, May the 7th, that's two weeks, uh, we'll have refreshments before and after the service, and it will be Holy Communion Sunday. We've got a bunch of other announcements. The calendar up through June is in your bulletin, and we'll just continue to update that and keep things moving in the right direction, hopefully. Any other announcements this morning? Okay, well, we have gathered to worship God. And I'm going to ask you if you would please stand and join me for our call to worship. It's in the bulletin. We'll read it responsively, and it will also be on the screen. Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. <laughs> Blessed are you who are hungry, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who now cry, for soon you will laugh. Generally speaking, crying is not something I have to do. Be happy when people are mean to you, when they gossip about you, and when they treat you badly. No, I don't think so. In this world, you give back what you give out. Rejoice and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. We are going into a time of worshiping our God who loves us no matter who we are. Amen. Let's pray together. Lord, as we gather this morning for worship, we thank you that you created us, that you know us, and that you love us. We are fully known and completely loved by you. And, and Lord, though we fail you, you have never turned your back on us and you will remain faithful to us forever. And this morning we also praise you for your sacrificial love. You lived the perfect life, and you died the death that we deserved so that we can be forgiven and live for all of eternity with you. So accept our praise and our thanksgiving this morning as we gather to glorify and to thank you. And it is in the holy name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Amen. Please. Well, we always have a wonderful opportunity on Sunday morning to bring our tithes and our offerings to God. This is our act of worship, an act of praise, part of our time of worship, where we're not only giving God our talents and our time this morning, we're not only giving him our praise and our worship, but we're able to bless him by giving him gifts as well. So with that in mind, let us receive, let's bring our tithes and offerings now to God. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you so much for the wonderful gifts that you give us each day. And Lord, we want to see others receive your gifts of grace and love and forgiveness and peace in their lives. And we, we want to be part of that, Lord, by sharing our faith with others, by letting others see you through us and also through giving of these gifts. Because we know that when we give, you use these gifts 
to make a difference in the lives of people around the world. So, Father, thank you for the opportunity that we have of partnering with you in, me, in reaching out to people with the gospel message. Bless those who will receive because we have been willing to give. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Yeah. Gracious Lord, we come before you this morning in prayer. And Lord, we dream of a world that is free of poverty and oppression. We yearn for a world free of vengeance and violence. And we pray for your peace to come, up, come upon our land. Lord, when our hearts ache for the victims of war and oppression, help us to remember that you healed people simply by touching them. Therefore, we ask that you'll give us faith in our ability that comes through your Holy Spirit to be instruments of comfort and healing to people who have been broken by violence. When the injustices of this world seem too much for us to handle, help us to remember that you fed 5,000 people with only five loaves of bread and two fish. Therefore, give us the hope and the determination that what we have to offer to others will turn out to be enough as well. When fear of the power and opinions of others tempt us not to speak up for the least among us, help to remember that you dared to turn over the tables of, money, of the money changers. Therefore, give us the courage to risk following you without counting the cost. When we feel ourselves filled with anger at those who are violent and oppressive, help us to remember that you prayed for those who killed you. Therefore, give us the compassion for our enemies as well. And when we tell, us, when we tell ourselves that we have given all that we can to bring peace in this world, help us to remember your sacrifice and give us the miracle of losing a little more of ourselves in serving you and our neighbors. Lord, we thank you for walking with us day after day as we, your people, answer your call to be your hands and feet. Increase our compassion, our generosity, and our hospitality for the least of your children. Give us the courage, the patience, the serenity, the self-honesty, and the gentleness of spirit that we need in a world that is filled with turmoil and terror. And in all that we do, Lord, let people see Jesus in us. Lord, you're a God of grace and love. Therefore, we ask that you help us to follow you, your leading every day of our lives, especially as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Looks like Jesus. Yes. Well, every periodically, I guess maybe around once a month or so, we use the affirmations of faith that have been printed and developed for us and printed in our hymnal. And there are things that the early church have developed that help us verbalize what it is that we believe. They state what, what our church believes and what we as individuals feel. And, uh, and they've preserved them for us to use. And 
a lot of other times they've just taken passages of scripture and they've put them into a, a form that we can use to, to express our faith. And so this morning we're going to use an affirmation from Psalm 8. If you'd like to use your hymnal, it's number 743 in the hymnal, and it's also going to be on the screen. Uh, your hymnal has some musical parts. We're not going to do any of that. We'll just use the, the written part, that, and you'll see it's, I'll read the regular part, and if you will read the part that's in bold, and we'll read it responsively. Let's affirm what it is that we believe using Psalm 8. O Lord, our Lord. Your glory is chanted above the heavens by the mouth of babes and infants. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, what are human beings that you are mindful of them? Yet you have made them little less than God. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all, things under their all sheep and oxen, and also the, beasts of the, field. the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea. Where it passes along the paths of yes. O oh Lord, our Lord. Well, our scripture reading today comes from John chapter 10, verses 22 through 33, and then we're going to jump over real quick for, to Mark chapter 9, verse 7. So let's hear the word of God. Then came the festival of dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was in the temple courts walking in Solomon's colonnade. The Jews, who were there, gathered around him, saying, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you're the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you do not believe. The works I do in my Father's name testify about me, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. Again, his Jewish opponents picked up stones to stone him, but Jesus said to them, I've shown you many good works from the Father. For which of these do you stone me? But we are not stoning you for any good work, they replied, but for blasphemy, because you, a mere man, claim to be God. And then we go to Mark 9, one little verse, verse 7. It says, Then a cloud appeared and covered them, and a voice came from the cloud, This is my Son whom I love. Listen to him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Yes. Well, today for the message, I'm going to do something a little different. Instead of preaching the type of message that I normally do, what I'm going to do is simply share three stories with you. Stories about different situations, different circumstances, different people, and their relationships with God. And I'm going to ask you to please pay attention to each of these stories and see if maybe you can relate to them in any way at all. And I'm also going to ask you to think about how you might be able to apply them to your faith and your life. Because the message, the title of the message this morning is, Are We Listening? Also, please understand, two of these stories I've actually made them up. They're pure fiction, okay? And, and so, you know, I'm sharing with them with you today not because in some underhanded way that I think maybe you are like the people in the stories. I'm not, don't, don't think I'm trying to hint around about that. But rather to show us that many people today are not really listening to God and what he says to them. And the effects of not listening to God not only has on their faith, 
but on their lives as well. And then hopefully, maybe we can use bits and pieces of these stories and what we learn from them to maybe help us listen a little bit better to what God regularly says to us. So, here's the first story. It was a cold, wintry day late in December, and the Jews were celebrating the Feast of Dedication. Oh, it was a very important Jewish celebration, and today it's still going on, and it's known as Han Hanukkah. And as they were celebrating, and everybody was partying and having a great time, Jesus was walking near the temple, and there were a lot of people with him, and they were there for a reason. They wanted to know. They wanted to be sure. Are you the Messiah? Are you the promised one that was sent from God? If so, just tell us. And they pushed in closer because they were clamoring for an answer. And Jesus looked at these people, these religious people. He looked them straight in the eye. And quietly he said to them, I did tell you, but you do not listen to me. When did he tell us? I never heard him say he was the Messiah. And soon other voices echoed the same words. As they and as they spoke, their voices grew louder. And seeing this, Jesus said to the crowd, wait a minute. The miracles I do in my Father's name speak for me. Although you're very religious, although you come to the temple every single day, you really do not listen. And the reason you're really not listening to me is because you're not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice because you are not my sheep and they hear me speak even though you don't. I know them and they follow me. I protect them. I give them eternal life. And my Father, who is the greatest power of all, also protects them and keeps them safe. The Father and I are, in this, are one in this purpose. Sheep? Who do you think we are? You're acting as if we're some great shepherd that we should follow you. We're not sheep, we're men, one of them shouted angrily. And they all reached down to pick up stones to stone him. You know, we have to wonder, why weren't they listening? You know, in James chapter 1, we read, My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. For a person's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves, but also do what it says. Let me ask you something. Can you relate to this story? When your faith is challenged by a person or a situation, or when you have the opportunity to tell someone about Jesus and witness to your faith, do you too back away from God? And when God himself speaks to us, how many of us pick up stones ready to stone him because we too don't want to listen to him? Second story. It was a beautiful spring day. The sky was blue, the trees were green, the sun was warm and mellow. It was just beautiful. Steve and Susan were enjoying a day eating lunch in the park. And, you know, and Susan said, do you, let me ask you something. Do you really believe all that stuff about Jesus? Do you really think he is the son of God, the Messiah, Christ, the Savior, and the other things that, I, that are said about him? Yes, I do, said Steve. Okay, but, but why Jesus? Why not somebody else? I'm not even sure I believe in God, much less Jesus. Steve thought for a moment, and he said, well, I believe in Jesus because of the things he taught us. I believe in Jesus because of the miracles that he did and the, the miracles he still does today in people's lives. And I believe in Jesus because he died for all of us and, and he was raised again from the dead. And nobody else has ever done any of that, either before or since then. I don't know, Susan said. Seems to me Jesus was a great man, but the Son of God... I just don't really think so. I mean, it's just, it's just too weird. It's just too hard for me to understand. 
Let me ask you, friends, doesn't it make you wonder why Susan is hearing about Jesus, but she isn't really listening? How many of us today also are hearing about Jesus? How many of us today are also hearing about his love for us and his power in our lives every day, yet we're not really listening either? You know, if you were going to modernize uh, chapter 28 in the book of Acts, it would say this. Would you hear but not understand? Would you see and not understand? Will you see and not perceive? Has your heart become so calloused that you hardly hear with your ears? Have you closed your eyes and when you see with your eyes and when you see with your ears and when you understand with your heart, then you will turn to me and I will heal you. And the third story. It was a beautiful Sunday morning in the local United Methodist Church. And the worship service had just ended and the people were all standing around talking. Yet no one paid attention to the stranger, the visitor, that was standing all alone in the back corner. And he was standing there listening to the conversations that were going on. One angry man, he was really angry. He said, look, I don't care what they say. Giving money to that mission is a waste of our good money. I don't know who those people are, and they're not our problem. Let them go out and get jobs, and and just like we did. We need new chandeliers. We need new pew cushions for our church. And besides, we've worked hard to get all the money we have in our CDs, and I'm not cashing them out just to give to those people. I won't stand for wasting our money on some mission project. And another man was standing in in a group on the other side of the church, and he was overheard saying, All this pastor wants to do is turn our worship into a rock and roll show. I've been accused of that. Um, Bringing that music in here, we don't need guitars and drums and those videos and those TV screens and all that stuff. He says he's trying to reach young people. We don't even have any young people in this church. Why is he trying to reach them? We didn't need that stuff before, and we don't need it now. If it's not in the United Methodist hymnal, we don't need it. And the the stranger standing in the corner realized that the meaning of love one another somehow had been lost in the hearts of these people. In another part of the sanctuary, a woman was complaining about the changes that had recently been made in the church. What do you mean we've got to change with the times? I know things are not like they were years ago, but that doesn't matter to me. I don't care if those people know God or not. All that matters to me is that my church stays the same and that it doesn't become something that I don't like. I like my church just the way it is. Let those people go and find another church somewhere if they want to find something else. I actually had a person tell me that in my church one time. And I said, what about the future of the church? And she said, look, as long as the church is here for my funeral, I don't care what happens to it after that. That was one of my church members. However, listening to this, the stranger in the corner was still standing there. And he remembered what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 28, where he said, go out and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And the stranger standing in the corner shook his head, and he thought, is that what it means to love God? Is that what it means to go and make disciples? And this stranger standing in the corner knew that although this woman attended church, she had already chosen to follow the voice of another master. And finally, after everyone had left the church and gone home, this stranger standing all alone in the corner, he lifted a nail-scarred hand and he wiped away his tears. And all alone, in a loud voice, he said, are they really Friends, we just heard three stories, each with similar messages. 
Three stories that hopefully, hopefully, maybe we can learn a lesson from. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. I just realized something. There's a fourth story that needs to be told here today. Yeah, a fourth story. It's a story about us modern-day Christians, followers of Jesus Christ. It's a story about those of us who attend church every Sunday and who sing praises to God each week and who hear his word read and proclaimed. It's a story about us who regularly hear Jesus telling us, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Come to me and I will give you rest. It was me. I died and rose again just for you to set you free from the prisons of your sin, your pain, your disappointments, your selfishness, and your pride to give you eternal life. I love you more than you know, and all I want is for you to love me in return and to love me with all your soul, mind, heart, strength, and your neighbor as yourself. And you see, because my, the presence and the power of my Holy Spirit is with you every day of your life, and because you can indeed stand up and face anything and everything that comes your way, if you will just trust me and believe in me, because I am with you, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. Go out into this community, share the good news of the gospel, tell people who I am, make disciples of all people regardless of what it takes, and remember, I am with you always. Yes, we modern day Christians, we hear these words anew from Jesus every day of our lives. We've heard them so often that we actually almost know them by heart. But just like the people in the stories, are we really listening? Let's pray together. That was a powerful message, Lord. That was so powerful. We thank you for coming to us this morning for reminding us of who you are and the difference you can make in our lives. And for those of us who are gathered, for those of us who gather every week, we hear your word read and proclaimed. We share and we talk about it during the week. And we know exactly what your promises are to us. Help us, Lord, to truly listen. Many times we become so complacent about it. It becomes so commonplace that we forget it, and it just sounds like words. Bring it to us anew today, Lord. Bring it to us anew. Help us to hear with our ears all over again, and help us to hear with our hearts the message that you continually bring to us that promises us peace and faith and forgiveness and even eternal life. Father, we thank you for loving us so much. We thank you, Lord, that you send us out into this community. And Father, we pray that when people see us and when they talk to us, they'll say, you know, looks like Jesus. Looks like Jesus. For it's in your name we pray. Well, thank you for worshiping with us this morning. Thank you for joining us in this awesome family of faith, this family of God, as we gather together. Think about what we've talked about today. Are we listening? And I, I don't mind telling you, I have struggled with this message this week because the question that I have been asking myself is, how well am I listening? I know the gospel message. You know the gospel message. I've heard it all my life. I preach it every Sunday, but am I really listening? Am I really hearing what God has to say to me? And that's a question I think we all need to ask. And if we pray and we say, God, where in areas of my life where I'm not listening, please show me so I can change them and I can be healed from them. Because I want to hear what you have to say to me every day. 
I truly want to be your follower. I truly want to be your disciple. As you leave here now, go in that strength that only God can give you. Go in his power. Go in his love. And go in his grace. And in all that you do, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, go in his peace. Amen.